Well, fashion is a profound form of expression for society. We all get up in the morning, wake up, we have two decisions to make. What do I want to eat for breakfast? And what am I gonna wear? We're looking at over a thousand people just to put on one week of Kansas City Fashion Week. The fashion industry, particularly in Kansas City, is more than an industry, it's a community. So I started with a professional dance career. It was almost two decades long, but I had some aspirations of doing fashion design. My grandmother was a designer and a seamstress. Once I retired from my ballet career, I started directing a ballet company, and I realized I couldn't really speak to costume designers and seamstresses because I didn't know the language. And I knew that was me and not them, so I realized it was time to follow in my grandmother's footsteps, learn the business, learn the language, and I taught myself how to sew. That brought me into designing women's wear, which then brought me back into runway. And I feel like runway has this costume element. So I've almost come absolutely full circle. This piece is probably from the late 1800s, early 1900s. It has the Lego mutton sleeve, which was really popular at the time, the big sleeves. It has a lot of beautiful detail trim. Probably this piece wasn't worn very much. And even the hem has got the pinking and they would change out the hems because there was dirt on the ground, there wasn't paved roads. And so you could change out your hem if it got dirty. So this is the inside. And if you see all this is boning and it's actually, it's hard, it's metal. Um, and this is all binding trim. It's really well maintained inside. There is some pieces that we have that have little brown dots on them. Um, you might think they're rust, but the truth is it might be from blood. Just the fact that they're metal and they're rubbing against your skin and they're very tightly fitted would create sores and eventually you might bleed from it. Sounds awful. There is a ton of opportunities uh, for fashion design education here, but I was specifically looking at that Johnson County Community College program and was always very impressed with it. Well, the illustration class is sort of a fundamental class for our students to start to learn to, to express their ideas visually. They're, they're learning um, not only the, the techniques of illustration, but also learning how to do flat sketches and detailed line drawings. Oftentimes in our business, we're dealing with industries uh, overseas, right? In China or Bangladesh or wherever, and they may not speak the same language we do, but a visual representation or a drawing is a method of communicating that everybody understands. So we really emphasize to our students, not only a proper rendering of fabrics, but uh, very, very specific details of drawing. Part of the reason why I went to school was exactly this. I used to absolutely design with a pair of scissors. So for the My Fall Winter collection, I, for the first time, was able to draw everything out first 
which was fantastic because I could make edits that didn't require me wasting fabric and wasting time. Kansas City Fashion Week came about because there was not an outlet in Kansas City for designers, hairstylists, makeup artists, models to showcase what they do for a living. I think it's really important to, to have a fashion show because it's a different form of art. You can put it, you know, your, your storyline together through fabric. It helps build their brand. It helps get their name out to the general public, to buyers of um, retail boutiques and larger, larger retail stores. On a big platform and a big stage, it would be like you have a message and a megaphone. We typically have about 60 to 70 applicants per season. Um, it's a very strict process of selecting the designers. So we go through and they, it's a very long application, to be honest. We also ask them to submit um, photos of previous looks, photos of previous fashion shows that they've been involved in, just so we can kind of get an idea of where they are in their style, where they are in their career as far as quality of work. And when I got accepted into KC Fashion Week, I think everyone in the city probably heard me <laughs> yelling and screaming with excitement. is the original Nellie Dawn. The reason she became very popular, she took sort of this idea of a house dress and made it really pretty with ruffle and trim um, for daytime and things like that. And this one is Nellie Dawn 1929. Now it becomes more indicative. This two piece really does look like the 20s. It's a lot straighter, it's a lot slimmer, um, you know, not a lot of emphasis on the hip and the waist. It's got a little welt pocket kind of hidden back in here. And then she's trimmed it out all through the collar. Um, and so it's, it's simple, but it definitely has details that women of the times were wanting. So backstage at Kansas City Fashion Week can get a little crazy, but um, I think for the most part, we are very meticulous in the way we plan. With Kansas City Fashion Week, we are asked, our call time is usually around noon. And to be honest, we're pretty busy that entire time in terms of doing hair, doing makeup, um, doing fittings before the show. That will start at noon and then end. Show starts roughly around 6 p.m. So it takes like a solid six hours to get that done. Um, like right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just blot her, make sure she's good, and then what I'm going to do is powder her, and then I'll do her eyebrows, do her eyeshadow, and then I'll do, um, I'll do her liner, and then I will do her blush and lips. Put some nice Barbie eye, eyelashes on her face. Other thing we want. We want those landmark horizontal lines, right? We want our, we have a hip line, right? Crotch line that needs to line up. We have a knee line for a trouser sloper. And we've got to make sure that that all lines up. Well, flat pattern is really kind of our um, engineering class. A lot of people don't think of fashion as a STEM um, discipline, but we have a profound um, 
use of STEM technologies and engineering and things like that. So flat pattern is a puzzle. It's basically building the pieces with using engineering principles like geometry and measurement and, and creating a pattern that you can then sew into 3D format to make clothing. Both my grandmas were both seamstresses. Um, when they both came over from Mexico, my grandma actually worked in the garment district in a factory um, back in the 40s. And I always kind of fought the urge to do it. Uh, I was kind of self-taught as a kid. In high school, I decided to take construction. And then I just, gave in, I was like, well, it's just kind of a destiny for me since it's kind of been in my family. So this is a good little tip that, to think about. Yes, cross off the ones because it's It's very to... important. We start out just using patterns that are already in existence, um, you know, teaching them through commercial patterns. But then it's really important for the students to learn to develop their own, to create their own so that they can create their own unique styles. My Fall Winter 19 collection is inspired by marketing and advertising of the 60s through the 90s. I love, love, love looking at branding and looking how companies really uh, supply a sensation and a feeling around their product. They used fashion to really appeal to their audience, appeal to their target market, and create this kind of hip and trendy sensation around what they were selling. So first we're gonna do my moon dress, which I, um, there's no reason it's called the moon dress other than that's just what nickname it, it has eventually gotten. Um, and it's my look number one. So it's the first one that goes down the runway and I tried to put all my elements in that first dress. So it really is a strong preview of everything that's gonna happen after. So here we go. This is it. This is a print that is specific to the collection. A little bit of vinyl. Um, there's a touch of tulle on the underneath side. This skirt has a really strong shape to it. So between the sleeves and the shape, it just kind of has this spacey vibe, I think. My orange bottom shoes, all the ladies are wearing black pumps with orange bottom shoes and it's it's a throw to Louboutin. So it's a throw to red bottom shoes. <laughs> and now when shoes have red on the bottom, you know, now you're paying thousands of dollars <laughs> for them. And it's just so interesting to me that yes, things do cost more because of quality, but there's also this just sensation around fashion elements and we all agree to those ideas. This is Christian Dior. This is dubbed the new look. And so after the war, uh, he comes on the scene in 47 and changes the silhouette and it, it changes overnight. Generally fashion is a slow, evolves slowly, but this was definitely revolutionary. It was also very scandalous. So especially in Europe after the war, to come out with this full skirt and tons of fabric and um, you know, it had it was a little controversial. So this really becomes what is the look in the 50s, is the nipped waist, the full skirt. Um, this has got a petticoat underneath it. Just very beautifully done. rehearsal actually happens on the day of their show in the venue we have them walk the actual runway we can give the models any last minute instruction and placement as far as you need to stop at this point for the photographers to get the shot the straight on runway shot um, this is how you pose this is how many poses you need to do at the end of the runway that's a really good pace 
you're going to come up a little closer. This is where you're going to pose. This is where they're going to be taking all of your pictures right behind me, okay? When you're done taking your poses, you'll take a couple steps forward and you'll turn, line yourself up with these diamonds. And follow the diamonds to keep you center all the way down, okay? You do not pose except for down there and right at that chair, okay? They don't know what the runway is actually gonna look like until they get to the venue and they see, oh, the runway is only six foot wide and there are people sitting on both sides of me. Like, I have to be really careful about where I'm walking and I, I can't take this turn quite as wide as I thought that I could. Am I jiggling? No, you're not I'm jiggling. I'm trying to focus on that lady. No, you're not jiggling. You're not jiggling. <laughs> okay, I don't think you can do that. I want one, I want one, I want one. So it's really helpful to do a full rehearsal on the day of the show. Sometimes it's dress, sometimes it's not. It just kind of depends on the designer and whether or not they have like a long gown that they need to see how it flows on the runway before the night of the show. Um, or um, we have had some models that are taking a jacket off or something and need to practice that as they're walking down the runway. So that's a great time for them to do that before the night of the show. Get those seems to me. Um, one, another thing I would change is something I would do again is probably do more prototypes just to fit the sides a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would look, even if I did it in a different material on the bottom. The draping class is, uh, is developing patterns similar to a flat pattern class, only the difference is rather than developing from measurements and lines and numbers on two-dimensional paper, you're actually molding fabric onto a dress form, it's much like a sculptor. When I bend it down, then it's going to hit this part. You know what no, I mean? No, no, this, this part taller, but this flat oh, comes down to here. I, okay, so more material. More fabric. To be honest with you, I think this is true of any uh, creative discipline. Uh, you learn more from your mistakes than you do from your successes, and that's a hard thing for students to learn. Um, and they, you know, you got your perfectionists that are afraid to even make a mistake. So we have to push them like, you know, just cut it, just do it, just leap. What's the worst thing that could happen? Jason Atherton is our photography director and he does a great job of, of selecting the photographers that go through the application process as well. You know what we're doing, right? We've done this once, yeah. twice before. So lots of full lengths, head to toes, um, fronts, sides, um, and then I'll come in and do some halves and three quarters for you, okay? All right. When a designer has a model walking down the runway, obviously the people who are in attendance at the show are the only ones seeing the garment. So it's very important that we have a huge team of photographers there at each show to um, document this for each designer. Okay, so show tonight, um, center pit, center, side pit, anywhere but the center, side stages, anywhere behind the chairs, show, intermission show, I need 15 to 20 highlights, high res, no logo, uploaded to Dropbox sometime within the next 24 hours. Um, variety is key, especially if you're on the side or even in the pit. I don't, we don't want to see the exact same model five times or even the exact same pose five times. So, I mean, bring the, the, the variety. And I think we had upwards of 30 photographers throughout the week, making sure that we have various angles of photography for each collection, but then also the straight on runway shot that the designers can use on their websites and can use on marketing material and different things to help promote their brand further.
Now we're getting into the 70s and there's different components, but this is something that became very classic and sold very well in the 70s. This is a classic shirt dress. This is actually ultra suede, which is not real, synthetic suede. Synthetic was something becoming popular in the 70s and 60s. It was actually manufactured for the war and most of things that we eat, <laughs> wear, uh, use are because of war efforts. So plastic, um, poly, polyester, things like that. This was also just a great, easy dress. Women were starting to get into the workforce. There was this idea, this more calming down, simplistic look of the 70s. Halston also went very disco too. So we've got elements of that in our collection. But this just really shows an everyday dress that women could wear to work. It was simple, it was classic, um, and it was something that was somewhat affordable. just opened for our first night of Kansas City Fashion Week, so I'm really excited to show you guys tonight what is going on. So I moved them to empty seats in the like BV or whatever, so we need to make sure we solve for that tomorrow. Okay. Somebody backstage that can, oh, hold on. There's no toilet paper in that bathroom right here. I don't know who to tell, but. I can, <laughs> I can fix that. From where I live, it's probably about a 40, 45 minute drive. Yeah. Do your thing. My husband. <laughs> Wonderful. Your leg hurts. What did you do, baby? It's a growing. It's a grow. It's a growing pain. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. Did Daddy rub it? Did you drink some water? Yeah. Well, it should start to feel better real soon, buddy. Buddy, no, don't cry, bud. It's okay. You want me to kiss it through the phone? Okay. Bye. Oh. Seriously, my feet. First day, first day. Nineteen eighties. <laughs> This uh, designer is Skazi, and um, we dubbed this dress the Nancy Reagan dress because that was obviously in the 80s where the Reagans, um, and she might have, she loved red, so she, I don't think she wore it, but she might have. And Skazi was a designer that did dress first ladies, so there you go. The 80s was more is more. Bigger shoulders, bigger hair, bigger earrings, more makeup. It just was an excess. And the fi financially, things were successful. People spent a lot of money uh, all over the country, and so big oversized pieces were definitely something that was being worn in the 80s. So before we get started, 
I just wanted to say thank you all for participating in our industry and in our community for these 15 seasons. According to the Department of Labor, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the number of people who put that they were a fashion designer on their tax return, 30. Three zero, 30 in 2010. For fashion designers in the Kansas City metropolitan area, in 2016, the number was 200. That means, that means every week, every week, some new entrepreneur steps up and says, I am going to be a fashion designer.